and uh, this data mode is called FT8 and it's one of the data modes where it's got really good propagation and you can pretty much um, be able to talk to people all across the world. So, for example, on this mode, you can talk to people from South America, North America, from the Southeast. It's so quite a versatile mode, uh, but the thing I'm more used to is further on down here, which hopefully, if I go to this mode. Okay. So what is happening when you turn this? Uh, is so this is the tuner for it. So basically okay. I'm tuning to a different frequency all the time because we're okay. given certain allocations which we can use as ham okay. radio operators. Okay. So we're actually given quite a lot of bandwidth to play with. Okay. And some frequencies is um, quite a few megahertz okay. um, that we're given. Um, but here I'm basically just tuning around to different frequencies. Okay. So the lower frequencies on the bands we're given are usually Morse code, so maybe not so much on this one here. Okay. Um, by the way, the frequency I'm on right now is something called 20 meters. So basically okay. the wavelength we're transmitting on is 20 meters long. If you imagine how big that actually is. Uh, it's not set in a, a megahertz or anything. Uh, so this is here in, is in kilohertz, so I'm okay. currently at um, 7037 kilohertz. Okay, okay. But if I go further on down here, this is usually where a lot of people... Okay. It, like I said, it's very quiet at the moment because there's not many people in the band. Okay. I'll see if I can maybe see someone talking at all. Uh, okay. So 7000 kilohertz means is it FM or...? Uh... So that doesn't actually matter on what the frequency you use, what okay. sort of type um, we're transmitting on. So. On, on any frequency, you can transmit AM, FM, oh, really? digital okay. modes. Okay. It doesn't matter about the frequency, it just matters what you put actually on that frequency. Uh, okay, I understood. In amplitude modulation, you're changing the amplitude. Exactly. And FM, you're changing the frequency. Exactly. Okay. And in fact, uh, on most amateur radio sets, we use something called single sideband. So okay. I don't know if you know the waveform of like AM waves, but it's basically like a sort of a, a inverse W wave, okay, okay. it looks like. Okay. But that takes a lot of bandwidth up, so okay. we can do something quite clever, and we literally chop that signal in half, okay. and it gives us pretty much the same. Um, we pretty much can duplicate that, and it gets our AM wave back. Okay. Okay. Is it because of the periodicity of the wave, or is it because the wave is mirror mirror of the uh, next period? You're chopping it to one cycle, or? I'm chopping it to a half, uh, oh. well, I'm not chopping the, the signal in half, I'm chopping the bandwidth oh, okay, okay, to okay, half right. the bandwidth okay, instead okay. of having the full one. Because we're sometimes given not much space in some of the bands, okay. that um, it just helps us to declutter it pretty much. Okay. But the bands is a little bit quiet at the moment, so I'll probably give you a bit of demonstration of, oh, here we go actually. So. You can hear vague sort of signal that someone's actually there, and that's mainly because that I um, don't have the antenna pointing the right way. So with our antenna system upstairs, we can rotate it 360 degrees all the way. Oh, well, I'm sorry, I mean 180 degrees around. And um, so currently I'm pointing north, but if I point more towards Europe, which I'm doing right now, here, so you can see the needle moving at the moment. Yeah. And literally, as we speak, on top of us, that whole antenna set is rotating around. Ooh. So I point it round to the east. Okay, that's what happening with the just push up that button. The antenna is moving now. So if I point it more to the east, I'll probably get a bit better reception. So there we go. That's coming in a bit louder now. Yeah. <laughs> so that RX light is highlighting because we are receiving. Exactly. Okay. So, Anyone good at foreign languages? Yeah, yeah. Something a bit like French, maybe. French. Probably. You're probably right. Yeah, I think you're definitely right. Uh, I know if it's like that too much. <laughs> so can we use it in bi bi-directional? When somebody is... Uh, can we receive and transmit at the same go? We can't transmit and receive at the same time, okay. um, sadly not. Well, we could do if we had two radios, okay. so one's receiving and one's transmitting at the same time. Okay. Uh, but with these ones, it's called simplex, so we can only transmit at the same time okay. and we receive uh, at separate time on the same frequency. Okay, so you are saying, that's the reason you are seeing this over, right? Uh, 
uh, Nick Orwell. Yeah, pretty much, because we yeah. can only use one frequency in it. So I can cool. give you a demonstration if you want. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, I'll just please. sit down so I can yeah, see sure. here. So what you first want to do is find a frequency which is clear, because like I said, we are given a lot of bandwidth to play with, but um, it can also be quite cluttered. So usually you put our call to ch check um, if the frequency is being used, because you might not be able to hear someone, um, but they could probably hear you, because the, the path of the antenna can be very strange at some times. Um, we use a lot of the ionosphere up in the upper atmosphere to sort of bounce our signals around and uh, to get us to places that we couldn't just get to pretty much with just a um, ground wave. Uh, so I've checked the frequency in use. So Mike 6 Oscar Whiskey India slash alternate is the frequency in use. So you basically just want to listen out and just check the frequency is, is pretty much in use. Um, after that, you can pretty much start calling to see if someone comes back. So if I have a piece of pen and paper, okay. I can put out a call and see if anyone actually does come back to me. So we do something called a CQ call. Okay. So you said you know a bit of French, and I believe that's uh, French. Um, I can't remember why, but it's got history to a, a French word, which basically means seeking you. Um, but that's why we say CQ, CQ, CQ. Okay. Um, then we also say our call sign, so okay. to identify ourselves. Okay. And uh, then we pretty much stop transmitting and we wait for someone to come back to us, and that's the okay. start of our conversation, pretty much. Okay. So you just now you just uh, transmitted to everybody. You're, you're, pretty much. It's yeah. just a broadcast at the moment. Okay. okay. Um, so in amateur radio, we're actually not allowed to broadcast. Okay. The only time which we are is when we're doing a CQ call or we want to initiate a conversation with someone else. Okay, so anybody who is listening to this frequency will be hearing that? Will be hearing me. Okay. So anyone in Europe will be hearing me um, okay. if they're on that frequency right now. So it might not get anyone, but I'll put a... What's the probability of that happening? Like. A um, so considering lots of people are probably on their lunch right now, probably okay. not very high, but on the weekends or evening it gets very lively. Okay. And also it's to do with the upper atmosphere, because of course in daytime okay. the ionosphere changes from day to night okay. and uh, we can get better propagation uh, which basically means we can get to a better signal to a different place in the world okay. um, when the ionosphere is maybe either in, uh, being affected by daylight or it's the night time where it's not getting the, the radiation from the sun. Okay. Um, can I just clarify that? So uh, anybody listening to this frequency can hear you? Uh, there should be. Well, anyone on this frequency towards the uh, way I pointed my antenna. So okay. I pointed it to the east, which okay. is towards Europe and so on. Okay. Um, but if I was to point up north, I would get people like Scotland. And if okay. I was to point to the west, you can get people from America and, and so and on. Is it a range of frequency? Like it, it shouldn't be that he should be in exact this frequency range, right? It should be. Is it a range? Uh, it can be a range, but usually it, they want to tune the exact frequency. Because okay. if I tune to someone else, okay, if I can find someone. Okay. Is there any like in uh, in audio radio? We have an option to find channels, right? Find the channel that are transmitting. You can do that, so, um, okay. but some signals are so weak that okay. you might not be able to do it. Okay. So you can see if you're not correctly on frequency, mm. it sounds completely yeah, different yeah, to yeah, a human yeah. voice. Yeah, sure. But if I tune onto the frequency, um, it's a bit hard to try and find someone. Because, like I said, you might not be able to hear someone who's on the same frequency as transmitting, okay. but they can hear you. Okay. So they might have their antenna pointed a different way to you, but you can, you're can you just intercepting that beam. Okay. Much. And is that the Morse code generator? So different? this here is the Morse key. So this is what I'm more familiar with than talking okay. on... Um, Okay. On by voice, so I can give you a demonstration of that. Okay. So if I tune to lower on down the frequency band, we've got certain allocations where we're allowed to use different modes just as uh, out of uh, courtesy. Okay. So if I just tune to this frequency here and put it into CW mode, which is continuous wave. Continuous wave. Okay. Whenever I press this key, it will pretty much transmit, and it will transmit a certain tone on on a certain frequency, and so on, of course on the frequency I selected it. So if I press this down. That just transmits a single tone on the frequency. It's basically just a switch okay. to a tone generator. That's pretty much all it is. Okay. But we can modulate that um, to the Morse code alphabet and send messages from that. So I could send out a test signal, which is. So that was test the Morse code and my call sign. Okay. And at the end of it, it, we use a lot of old fashioned stuff in Morse code because it's like a tradition. It's like speaking a traditional language. Oh, okay, okay. We have a lot of traditions when sort of using Morse code, um, okay. but 
that is one method you can use to talk to other people around the world if you're ever interested in Morse code because you can get a be lot better. Uh, you're more likely to pick up a Morse code signal because it's literally just on off, on okay. off, okay. compared to a whole uh, sort of um, range of frequencies that need to transmit for a voice message. Okay. Um, okay. Would you mind giving a demonstration of doing ERS, uh, like uh, so that I can? Um, I can do it without transmitting because I'm technically not allowed to transmit okay, or broadcast yeah, stuff yeah, sure, sure, as okay. an amateur radio operator. Okay, okay. okay, okay. Um, but I can give you a demonstration if you want for ears, just okay. um, without transmitting. So if I hold down this here, okay. it doesn't transmit um, okay. when I do it. So ears would be, uh, sorry. Okay. That would be ears. Dot, um, dot, da, 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 okay. dit, okay. and then dit, dit, dit. Oh, nice. So okay. that's it. So that's just one thing, if you're interested in Morse code, um, you